Watch your people. <clears throat> Just a quick video really about being newly licensed and a transition between CB radio and amateur radio. If you've took your test, <coughs> excuse me, and you're sort of at the point where you've got yourself a little rig but you've either not had a lot of success or been a bit apprehensive only you will know when you're ready to sort of pick the mic up and start talking but I'm just going to give you a few pointers and tell you a few things that you want to leave behind from CB number one obviously it's language you know that's a big no no number two CB lingo that's very frowned upon as well uh, using the right power as well that's quite important I ain't saying everybody does I mean I'm only an M3 myself but I have heard people that are blatantly not using 10 watts they're not fooling anybody to be honest because once you've come out of the CB world where you may well be a big fish in a little pond you've got your amplifier, your mega station if you like once you come out of that into amateur radio you'll be talking to people that could probably build your rig from start to finish you know, not stupid so <coughs> Just be sensible with it. You know, I'm an M3 and I pride myself on only using 10 watts. And even I've been questioned. I've had a few snidey comments, you know, like, well, oh, I thought it was only allowed to use 10 watts. Well, actually, I am. One of the local amateurs, right grumpy old sod, he said a lot of these newly licensed people don't know how to check their power on their rig and it was sort of direct to me, you know. And, uh, I was a bit sort of stunned by it really because I thought hang on I've been messing around on rig for over 30 years now I know how to check power and uh, yeah I was a bit taken aback a bit back by that and there is some videos on YouTube of a fully licensed amateur running about 5 watts chatting to one of the old cronies on there it's been on since the year dot you know one of them had took his amateur radio license in a lighthouse you know in a thunderstorm and with his eyes shut and whatnot sort of give him attitude about it I didn't believe him but the bloke was actually filming it you know he had the little uh, FT817 only a 5 watt rig so there is people out there that's questioning it even if you are running 10 watts so like I say on amateur radio there is a little bit of snobbery if you like and that is well I'm fully licensed and so it automatically makes me better than you well actually it don't to any of you fully licensed people out there it don't make you any better than them because to be perfectly frank if you've got a good memory you can breeze all three tests and at the end of it still end up knowing nothing and that's a fact you might know what answer to tick, but it doesn't mean to say you know a lot. I ain't saying, you know, that you don't know a lot, because there's people out there that do know all the technical side of stuff, but not all of you do, not all of us, should I say. Like I say, I've yet to do the intermediate, etc. So, <coughs> you're newly licensed, don't presume everybody's a fool, because they're not. You know, there's some very, very clever people out there. Uh, CB lingo, like I said, forget that. And one thing I, I've heard recently is someone keeps saying, back to you. Well, that's fine on CB. It's fully acceptable. On amateur radio, if you're going to do that, instead of the call sign exchange, sort of, you know, to say you're talking to whoever, if it was me, I would say their call sign and then my call sign. Let go of the mic or say QSL or whatever 
if you're going to say back to you, use the person's name as well. Because if you've got a group of amateurs all sort of listening, and you say back to you, if someone's only half cocked listening, like I normally am, they'll think, oh, you know, pick the mic up, and then they'll end up with two or three all talking at once, and it's just sort of not good. Uh, if you're newly licensed as well, I recommend registering with QRZ.com, it's free. Go and take a look at that. Another good site is uh, EQSL. Uh, they're, they're sort of two that I, I use and I found pretty good. There's all sorts of aspects of amateur radio which obviously I'm not going to cover all of them but it's just like from a pure newbie point of view. Most of you will find yourself on a repeater. Put your calls out, if no one answers try another repeater, you know. Try not to just keep calling and calling and calling because there will be people out there listening, there always is. Uh, and if you do hear two people talking and you think, oh, I want to sort of break in, more often than not, people will leave a, a pause in case anyone else wants to join in. If you hear, hear or see that pause, that pause, just give your call sign. M6, da da da, and just hope they hear you. Just not everybody leaves that gap. Uh, another thing a lot of people do, they just say break, break. It's, it's sort of a way of getting in. It's not the way you should do it. But it happens. You know, I find it myself perfectly acceptable. I mean, you shouldn't. The, the, technicality of it is you shouldn't go back to anyone who hasn't given their call sign so you're going back to an unidentified station but what people will say if you did say break break or break or whatever they would say yeah the break station go ahead and then you give your call sign and then from then on it's all, all okay uh, CQ calls as well I've heard on amateur radio. You don't need to CQ on a repeater. The repeater's doing the work, just give your call sign, you know, listening through. There you go. Uh, signal reports as well. You don't need to give a signal report. You, you know, you might be able to mention what the repeater's giving you, but everybody on that repeater will still give you that same signal. But you can check the, what they call the input, and you can say, "Yeah, I've got you on the input at S, whatever, whatever it is, you know." But so this is just a load of waffle, really. Because I haven't done a video in a little while. I've been pretty busy with one thing and another in the background, all going on, all top secret, you know. But all will be revealed, and it might take another couple of months. But uh, they are, it's nothing to do with anybody sort of that's sort of fresh and just found this video. So you're newly licensed, using a repeater, no need for CQ calls, bad language goes about saying. Uh, something I hear sometimes, people get a bit confused with call signs. And basically what you do, if you're going to do a call sign exchange, give their call sign first than yours because I've heard a lot of people doing it the other way around now it's no big deal no one's going to gear a thousand lashings for it but anybody listening let's just say it was an HF and I gave my call sign out in reverse and I said M3 MPY and then gave their call sign people listening would connect me with the other person's call sign so going back to anybody, if you're going to use the call sign exchange, use their call sign first, then yours. Jobs are good. Like I say, it's no big thing. And the transition between CB radio and amateur radio, it's pretty easy. But there's just a you know a few little things that you might find 
might have found uh, handy on this video. And I always say to everybody, listen first. Because once you've been through your foundation license, you might have been to the club four times and then you're on your own, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's, it can be a bit daunting. Listen around for a while, see, see what people say, we'll see what they do. Uh, things that you leave behind from CB, and it's something that I hope you don't hear on amateur radio. On CB, especially in years gone by, you'd hear people talking, and in the background they'd have the music going, or you can hear the telly going, or whatever. You don't want to be doing that. That, that will be frowned upon. People might not say it to your face, but you'll be associated with being a bit of a muppet, if you like. So if you think, I oh, know what, I've got this bass mic, I've wired it up to me rig, I'll crank it up and everybody will hear me and I'll be really loud. Well, that's fine. Providing that your telly ain't on, your dog ain't barking and the neighbours are mowing their grass, don't it, it don't sound good, you know what I mean? I ain't a snob. And I'd never ever be a snob. But some people are, well, I'm not saying amateur radio operators are snobs because they ain't but there's certain things you do and certain things you don't do and you sort of take in the step from one to the other I'm just trying to save you making them silly mistakes really and my next video a mate of mine Mandy who's one of my subscribers she's agreed to do like a, a bit of on air I'll have the camera this end filming a radio and that and that sort of conversation so hopefully that will throw a bit of light on it but it, amateur radio is not what's the word people are not as stiff upper lipped as what you might think if you go to an amateur radio club for example they're not all sat there with a vicar thing on and the little halo do you know what I mean it's just that they know you hear, hear them on the air and the way they talk but off the air they're just like you and I, you know. So don't be scared of it. Get on there. And uh, if you need some help, just leave a comment. Or obviously, if you've got your local repeater, you know, just say to uh, don't be afraid to sort of ask people, you know, because most amateurs would be very helpful. You get the odd undesirable, let's say it, but. Uh, Thank God they're far and few between. So good luck with it. And the next video should be, fingers crossed, me and my mate chatting on our local repeater. Thanks for watching and listening to my dribble. Catch you soon, guys.